Alhamdulillah, Ustaz Sam Rasulullah, it's a pleasure and honor to be with you. As you remind me, when I went to the medical school in Cairo, 19, what? What year was it? <laughs> you have to catch me, otherwise I'll catch you. <laughs> what year? 1967-68. And this was my medical school startup, not as good as you. Uh, I was in Azhar University at that time. She wants me, where is she? Sadia? She's talking about the journey. Ah, oh, that's, that's, that's you? Yeah. She wants me to talk about a long journey since I came to UK. I did not have any plan apart from becoming a doctor because my mother wants me to become a doctor. That's it. Exactly like your mother. That she, that's what she told you? So my mother and your mother have something in common. They met. They know one another. You sure? <laughs> okay. So a journey. Since I came here nearly 42 years ago. As a young medical graduate. No plan. Nothing. That's why I call my presentation from nowhere to somewhere or from nothing to something. This is my career and this is my journey over the last 42 years in UK. No one of us can claim that he can or she can be successful in her or his journey alone. Most important step or building block in my journey was my wife. And I am encouraging you to build a family. And the strong amongst you who will not be divorced. In the good old days, I'm serious about boys and girls, men and women. In those good old days, 30 years ago, the greater society was very envious or jealous of us because the, the, the divorce rate was very low. Now, because the weaknesses of the younger generation, they cannot take it. They cannot become patient. They cannot take the pressure. My career, my career, my career, my career, my career, my career. You care for my career? It's your luck that you, your, your bad luck you're sitting in front of me. <laughs> I keep checking on you all the time. <laughs> My career. So that's what I'm saying. The first important milestone in my journey was my family. Especially my wife. Do you think that your father and your mother, me and my wife, did not have any argument? We did. But we were looking for a bigger objective. Our family should be the building block of our society, of our nation, of our country, of humanity. Don't go to this terminology and philosophy, oh, I have it all. I have my job, I have my money, I have my flat, but you don't have the heart to look after you and to keep behind, to build generation, to build the future. Be careful. When you become a young medic, don't be distracted by the power of money, the power of fame, the power of science and technology. Allah asked us to build a family. This was my first milestone in my journey. Right? Next one, please. Can you read it for me? Your credibility is in your credibility. This for you to find out. I throw things to people. To answer it. Do, need, do I have to answer everything? No. Do I have to respond to everything? No. You have to be very confident in yourself. If people call you names, so what? They call Jesus, peace be upon him, names. They call Moses, peace be upon him, names. They call Muhammad, peace be upon him, names. They didn't care about this. Because they went ahead because they have a mission to accomplish 
message to deliver, community to build. Okay? And aim to achieve. When the ignorant ones make mockery about you, say peace be upon you and proceed. Don't ever, don't ever lose your eyesight on your objective. Excellence is what you need to do for your society, for your country here, for your university, for your technology and science. Excellence. Next one. There was another one supposed to be... Uh, no, anyway. I came here in 1977, as I, as I mentioned. I always fail. I never got my, my, uh, anything from the first time. I never got an excellent degree in my qualification. Either good or fair. Is that fair? Fair, huh? Just fair, yani, which is average, yani, or less than average. I never thought about that we are going to build the Islamic relief. But it is, at the time I was doing my membership exam for pathology, it was Sabra and Shatila, massacres in Lebanon. I always say this. And for the first time ever, we saw this on the newspaper. Really bad massacre in 1982. And this happened two or three weeks before my exam. And this led me to change my mind totally from focus on my medical career and to focus on my humanitarian career. It was a French news reporter who reported it from Beirut. It was shocking news for everybody, not only for the Muslim, for everyone. It is 1982. The famine in Africa in 1983 Hundreds of thousands and thousands from Eritrea and Tigray. The era of Bob Geldof, if you remember Sir Bob Geldof, at that time, and there was no Muslim charities at that time. And we thought that we need to do something as a part of the British society in UK. We started. Did we have any vision? No. Did we have any budget? No. Did we have any office? No. Did we have any computer? No. Do you have any telephone? No. It's all no, 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 no. Don't be defeated by the resources that you don't have. Don't be defeated by the resources that you don't have. Respond to the needs of the people. Money is not the end of everything. We have nothing in 1984. And we started with the young donation, with a small donation, 20 pence, from a young boy in Cairo. It was his, you know this chocolate? It was his chocolate money at that time. Nothing was on the table for us. And even when we had the first computer in 1986, we were standing next to it. It was like a dinosaur. And everybody coming to the room, computer. Up till now, I don't know how to use computer. I just used the keyboard. You got it? You saw me, huh? So this is how we started. You make the resources. You create the resources. You make the, the initiatives. You start the projects. You make the change. Because you are a change maker. You're not like anybody else. You want to become a medic? You finish this year, sir. You finish this year. What you plan to be. Your degree is good, but not good enough for me. Seriously, all your degrees is not good enough for me. You have to keep rising in the science and technology to excel, to produce data, knowledge, to produce ilm, to help, to save, to guide. Getting a degree is just the first step in your life. But getting to save lives of people, if this is the mission of your life. You know why? Because in my thesis, I did, I did my, uh, 
My, I'm, I'm uh, an MD from Birmingham University. You know that? MD? Not PhD. Doctor of Medicine. <laughs> I got my Doctorate of Medicine in 1991. I did my honorary doctorate in, in 2007. So I've got two Ds or three Ds. So I am the 3D doctor. You got it? You'd be five Ds. <laughs> so I discovered that the one who the first one to describe spina bifida and then carefully on the 10th century was Abu Qasim al Zahrawi. Abu Qasim al Zahrawi. He was from Andalusia. Huh? He was from Cordoba. Okay. He wrote Encyclopedia Medica in the 10th century. You be like him. Don't be like me. Your degree is the first step of your journey. Is that me? No, it's him, not mine. Anyway, when you look back, I want you to be like Ibn Sina, Avicenna. You know this name or not? You know this name or not? You don't know it. If you, look, if you go to Birmingham University Medical School, Barnes Library, you find that we put the names of the greatest scholar in humanity doing science and technology and medicine on the seats, the front ten, seat, the front ten seats. Anyway, this was myself when I was 30, 35 years ago. This one, see? Engage with young people, talking to them, making social activity. Okay, next one, please. Our connection is perfect protection. No, no, can you get the 84, please? The famine in Africa, we have to have a play, a role to play. Who made the success story of Islamic relief? People like yourself. Don't tell me Jamaat. Don't tell me a mosque. Don't tell me organization. It is you, secondary school students and university students. They used to come and work till midnight to do what? You know the envelopes? In the good old days, we have envelopes. We used to seal the envelopes with a sponge, sometimes with our tongue. We used to stick the uh, what's uh, on the envelope uh, uh, stamps <laughs> we used to fold the leaflets and those youngsters used to be with us till midnight happy enjoying it now most of them are in high seats either in this government in here in this country or abroad United Nations in Europe and other places but they started the voluntary activity at the age of 16, 17, 18, 19 20, 21 don't never to stay without voluntary activity. Never to stay without helping people. Never ever. This is your mission. It's not only to get your degree and to get a good salary. No. It's to get something to do for your life in your life. We were not politicizing. Our mission, from the very beginning, we want to become independent. We want to become independent of any traditional movement in this country. And we maintain that. Alhamdulillah. Then we started to put Islamic Relief offices in different parts in Europe and America. From nothing to something. I did not want to say with arrogance to everything, because no one of us can claim that he or she can do everything. And this is keep the arrogance away. That's from nothing to something. Next one, please, sister. That's very good. High tech. <laughs> keep ticking. All right, all right.
I can read it from here. Connections protection. There's something wrong in the technology. You know, in the good old days, we used to have these transparent sheets on a projector, and we see it. Now, order. What is this? Our work starts with humanitarian response. One of the milestones we have, when we received, we heard about Iran earthquake. We did not have an agenda of Shia Sunni. Never. Never ever to put Shia Sunni on the table. It's divisive. Never ever putting the Ubandi, Tablighi, Jamaat Islami, Sufi, Salafi. This is this isms is ignorance of the people who put them on the table. Divisive. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> so, Iran earthquake was a successful story. Sudan flood, Bangladesh flood. Let me tell you some nice story about Bangladesh flood. 25 million were underwater. And I failed my MD badly because I did not know how to write is, are, with, was, you, he, and she. I was very bad in English. I'm still. So they failed me miserably. But in my scientific knowledge, it was, alhamdulillah, to the top which led the president of the College of Pathology to bring me to his department and said, honey, I want your thesis to be in my library. You have to pass. Okay? Clear? At that time, Mangadesh flood came, and two young people from Bradford raised 30,000 pounds. British, uh, British uh, Airways gave us two first-class tickets to go to Bangladesh. I was going around to different mosques and other places to find people to go because this was in July, nearly June, July, and they're supposed to be submitting my thesis before November. Nobody wants to go. Soon I decided, and this is for you, soon I decided to travel to Bangladesh the following week in the same day, the same evening, the data that I had for the last four or five years reshuffled itself at the back of my mind to produce, to produce a new hypothesis to compare the growth rate of the spinal cord from the spine itself in the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and coccyx. And this was my new hypothesis. As if Allah is telling me, you think that you are going to leave your thesis behind to help my people and they don't give you some token of appreciation? And this was a new hypothesis that I wrote after I decided to leave my study and to go to Bangladesh. I went to my supervisor on Monday, show him the hypothesis, said it's good, put it there. You know what I wrote as a gratitude in my thesis? To whom? Any guess? Any guess? This is 1990, 1991. Any guess? I give my gratitude to whom? Huh? Make a guess. Speak up. I don't like people. Huh? George Bush. George Bush. Okay. <laughs> he was not there. It was not George Bush. Oh, no, he was there. He was there. He was there. You are right. No, no, not George Bush. Or Ali Bush or Muhammad Bush. <laughs> to whom? To Allah. <laughs> Obama was not there. Even Tony Blair was not there. You know what I wrote? Three pages of the steps of creation of man from the Holy Quran. Because this was scientific knowledge. It was a milestone in my medical career to relate 
what Allah said to what the signs discovered 1400 years after this has been revealed on Muhammad three pages in the first stage of our life as Islamic leaf we were, we were adamant to keep connecting networking we are one of the most open society in the world not only in Europe ghettos is not a part of our culture in UK never was that's why connection, networking, and connection is protection. You got this? Connection is protection. Next one, please. I was honored by the Queen in 2004. This one, 25th anniversary, with the Prince Charles came. This, this was the greatest worker of Islamic leaf. I love her very much. Natasha, you know where is this photograph taken? Chechnya. She used to work like 10 men in the middle of the snow from 8 to 8. She built the credibility of Islamic Relief in Chechnya. Very difficult area. Two wars, 1995, 1994-95, then 1999. And Natasha was there as a leading example for, a, for the Muslim woman who can contribute strongly to save humanity and protect society. Who is this? I don't know, this is supposed to be in Africa? Or? This is in China, in 2001. Our first project in China, in 2003, was in a non-Muslim area, in a Buddhist area, was affected by flood. And we built about a few hundred houses to the non-Muslims in China. You got it? Don't restrict yourself only to your culture, only to the people who believe in what you believe in, because humanitarian work is for everyone. Medics. Medics. It's for everyone and for anyone. And the first project in China was in Xi'an, the old capital of China. It was mostly Buddhist area. The second project was in a Muslim area in partnership with the Chinese local governments. Next, please. 2000-2010, meeting challenges of September the 11th. We have to stand up and say we are very proud of our country, we are very proud of our religion, we are very proud of our culture, and not guilty, because we are not terrorists, we are not radical, we are not extremists. Go and for, go out and find those extremist individuals that you talk about. But don't come and talk to me about um, and telling me I'm an extremist. No, I'm not. I'm a terrorist. No, I'm not. I'm a radical. No, I'm not. These Forbes, you know Forbes? Is it English word? Forbes. The phobic? The phobia? Phobia. Phobia. Yeah, but I, I have my own terminology. The Forbes of the phobia. <laughs> you see my new English? You know what, sister? You have to renovate and to put your new words in the English dictionary. Shakespeare is waiting for you. He wants you to have your... He's still waiting for you. And See, call it whatever you want. People invented a lot of new words in the English dictionary. Even in the Arabic dictionary, even in the French dictionary. Let me take you to a journey to tell you in the, in the, in the vocabulary how many proverbs and the vocabulary in the Arabic language. Anybody knows? Since we spoke about Shakespeare. Anybody knows? I don't want the medics to become silent. You can silent the patient by injecting them, but don't become silent. How many proverbs and words in the Arabic dictionary? In English language? In French language? In Russian language? In the Russian, 130,000. In the French, 160,000. In the English, 600,000. In the Arabic, any, 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 any guess, huh? One million, huh? Can I make it two? 
Five million, can we make it six? Twelve point two million. No way you can compare Arabic language to any other language. Because from one letter from one verb or one word you can have up to forty derivatives. You know the word B in Arabic? Kun? Kun? Kun ka in yakuna kana kunna? Five, six, ten, twelve. B? Give me, give me the proverb of B. But what do you get out of B? The B's. The do's. Huh? This is the difference. That's why when you understand the Arabic language, you'll be able to comprehend the metaphor of the society. Meeting the challenges of September the 11th. We did not put our head down, but we stood up to protect our integrity, our credibility, our community, our society, our, and our organization. That's why we went ahead to grow from September the 11th, 2001, up till now. New strategies, as I said, we started with no strategy, exactly like young people. But soon you find the product of what you planted, you have to deal with it. Our new strategy actually was to, no, not before, this is the one before this. No, this, not this one. Ah. You know when did we register Islamic Relief in, 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 uh, in UN? What year? 1993. This is the vision. 1993. Because I said, connection is protection. Next, please. Every time. A strategy is not a Quran or Bible. You keep changing it according to the needs of the people. Keep changing it, doesn't matter. Because you meet challenges, and for any new challenges like the, actually the Islamophobia now, the counter-terrorism, counter-extremism, you have to produce new challenges or new strategy to compete this kind of wrong terminology and wrong ideology. From 2000-2010, in my journey, as Sister Sadia was telling me, I gave up with Islamic leave because humanitarian response, just helping people, giving food and something like this, to doing something like advocacy, capacity building, build, peace building, building society, community building, research, and, 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 which nobody donate money for. Okay? And this is what we started to do, the humanitarian forum in 2008 and Muslim Chats Forum in 2009. Next, please. This is in Somalia. I'm not sure what this is. I can't remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter. This is some of the new work. It's building the capacity of people. This is in Libya, Arab Spring. The new challenges from 2011. No, not this one. Actually, up to now, which is Arab Spring and what's happening to the young people in different parts of the world. Next, please. 2011. Up till now, there was a lot of uprise in different countries. Young people like myself and yourself need direction to how to travel to Egypt, to Libya, to Sudan, to different countries, to tell them if you want to build your country, your community, this is the way to do it, like we learn in the UK how to do this. You keep rising. Don't stop your development. Because the more you develop yourself, the more you make a conducive, cohesive, productive, productive society. Conducive, cohesive, productive society. Okay? Islamophobia, I mentioned about it. War in turn, I mentioned about it. Let me tell you a joke. Let me tell you a joke. Okay. There's no definition of terrorism. There's no definition of extremism. There's no definition of radicalism. 
We have a say in Arabic called Fankush, which is nothing. You have been, maybe called one of these names, which does not have any definition yet. Even the United Nations nowadays did not decide on a unified definition of terrorism. So we can fight it together, can protect our community, can protect our country, can protect our nation, can protect humanity. Okay? So this is a big challenge nowadays for us to do and other challenges. To conclude, my time is up. To conclude, never stop learning. I remember my father, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant him he in heaven, inshallah. When I had a choice, when I was at, yeah, uh, older and uh, just qualified, and they had a job in the Gulf, a lot of money, and they have the opportunity to come to UK to learn. He said, my son, go to UK and learn. Knowledge is more important than money. Money can make you blind. You can think with the money. Like a lot of people who are rich don't know how to use their brains. A lot of people who are poor and educated know how to create initiatives and opportunities. Don't stop learning. Don't stop facing and meeting challenges. Don't stop producing solutions. Don't stop building community, building peace, creating peace, spreading peace, saving humanity. Never stop. No matter what you're being called, never stop building, saving, helping, educating, supporting, treating. It's one of the things which you need to learn, young medics, is to bend your back to your society, to your country, to your nation, to the poor, to the widow, to the orphans, to the sick, to the needy. Don't ever become arrogant by your degree or your money or your age or your strength or your vision or your achievement. And to the great characters of all the prophets of God, humility, being humble, that's why the Prophet ﷺ, when he was given the choice to be a king or a poor man, Jibreel السلام, told him, be among the miskin and the needy. He had the choice to become the king of the kings, but he chose to be among the poor. Exactly the teaching of Jesus when he used to go around and teach people in the slums. And Moses, who saved the Israelites, then they betrayed him in Sinai. And so, and so, and so, and so, and so. Bend our back to the people who will elevate us. We will be elevated by those poor people, by those needy, by those miskin, by those displaced, by those refugees, by those raped women and girls, or boys and men in prisons and in hostages now. Those people will elevate you. Those people will support you. Those people will, will protect you, protect all of us. This is the message. This is the message. The individual, this little orphan with running nose, with sticky eyes, if he smiles at you, Allah will look at you. If he doesn't, Allah will not. Because Allah will know that the love in the heart of this orphan was the key of heaven for you. And Allah don't differentiate between a Muslim orphan and a non-Muslim orphan. A Muslim widow and a non-Muslim widow. Just help anyone and everyone and everybody. Islam is not a religion of sectarianism. Islam is a religion of humanity. Building humanity. Saving humanity. Protecting humanity, finding solution for humanity. And you are the people who will make it. If we fail to achieve, you will achieve. If we fail to succeed, you will succeed. If you fail to produce, you will produce. If we fail to guide, you will guide. 
If you fail to teach, you will teach. If you fail to support, you will support. If you fail to, if you fail to build, you will build. You will build. You will build. But build what? Not a kingdom for you, but peace for humanity. Peace for UK, for, for, for here. Peace for everyone globally. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. The challenge on you is more than the challenge on us. But to be very honest, I want you to be 1,000 times better than myself. 100 times, 2,000 times, 100,000 times better than ourselves. This is my dream for you. This is my love to you. And this is my vision to you, Sister Sadia. Can you get me my son, please? Yes, yeah, my son. <laughs> he is 10 years old. Where is, he? Where is your mother? You know his mother? No. No, Allah? Do you know his mother? Have you seen her? Do you know his mother? <laughs> He's my son. Mashallah. Your wife is his What a great <laughs> knowledge you have. You shocked me. <laughs> my wife had him as a baby, huh? <laughs> You know, I am, I'm, 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 I'm holding this one here. Yeah, come, come next to me. <laughs> He's not your son. No, no. It's mine, huh? You need to draw a smile on the face of any child to see. That's why in my career, I learned the animal language. When I used to go to Pakistan or India or Bangladesh, I don't know how to speak Urdu, Hindi, Swahili, or whatever it is. But I say to the children, can you respond back to me? <laughs> anyone, anyone challenge? Anyone can meet the challenge? Oh, very good. Come on. Who did it? Come on, come on, come on. Come next to me. Yeah. Come on, come on. Let us do it together. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> encourage her, encourage her. Thank you, thank you. I'm actually a medic. Huh? I'm actually a medic. She is not a medic. I want a medic. Come on, stand here. Come on, come on here. Come on, come, come back, come back, come on, come on. Come on. I want some of one of you to challenge her. Come on, come on, you, you succeeded. Come on, come on. Anyone can stand, can rise? Come on. Anyone? Boys, boys, boys. Anyone can can rise? Can Sadia? Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Now come on, y'all. Go on, go on, y'all. Come on. Yeah, go on, go on. Okay, let me, could you repeat it and then I'll do it. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, man. Okay, Hand of applause, please. Sadia. You want some? Huh? I finished. Thank you, brothers and sisters, and medics and non-medics and everyone. Uh, you, when you draw a smile on the heart of the child, on the heart of the woman, on the heart of the elderly, on the heart of the sick, you see, this is your job. This is your unpaid job. 
which save you before Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter whom you there is a smile on his or her face. Don't look at their color. Don't look at their religion. Don't look at their culture. Look at them as human beings. Sons and daughters of Adam. Children of Adam. Your responsibility is to make people happy. To build their life. To build their future. If you are credible, you will make them credible. If you are integral, you respect them. You love them. You care for them. Let your degree to be elevated or elevating you by the love of the people. By the love of the people. Not by the love of yourself to yourself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, Sister Sadia. Uh, but I think this is enough, isn't it? <laughs>